Hello everyone, this is Colleen Lemma, Angelic Astrologer and Spiritual Consultant from AngelMessenger.net, here to do your weekly Angel Card reading for Monday, July 7th through Sunday, July 13th, 2014. So we're already into the second week of July. Time is kind of going by really fast. Um, this, again, is going to be a month of change and freedom and redirection as we move throughout the month, especially the second half of July. I feel like it's a turning point kind of month. And if you want to hear more or read more about the energies, the astrological energies, universal energies, then please go to angelmessenger.net and read my Angelic Astrology article for July 2014. Also, don't forget to take a look at the monthly angel card reading video for July. That is also up on YouTube, and it's actually a very, very positive reading for the month, so you'll want to check that out. Okay, so let's look at the astrology for this week before we kind of pull our cards and see what the angels and our guides have to tell us. On Tuesday, July 8th, we have the sun in Cancer is going to be making a challenging aspect to Uranus, which is kind of the great awakener, um, the rebel. It's about freedom and independence and doing your own thing. And, you know, since the sun is in Cancer, that's a very emotional, uh, sensitive sign. And again, Uranus wants to break through and and create a new path in a new way. So there might be just something sudden and unexpected that comes in. Uh, you know, I don't even necessarily feel like it's going to be a challenge so much, even though that this is a challenging aspect, but I think it's just going to be something that is unexpected, something that's surprising that occurs. And it, it may even come in on Monday, um, the 7th, because, you know, the sun, as it's approaching Uranus, on both Monday and Tuesday, either one of those days could definitely bring about some, you know, redirections in your life. Later in the day on Tuesday, the sun will actually make a positive aspect to Saturn. So I feel that whatever this surprising redirection is that maybe comes in suddenly and out of the blue, that towards the end of the day, towards later in the day, it actually helps to kind of secure things in. It helps to, to create some sort of form or structure as you're getting ready to move ahead. And that form and structure, too, could definitely be on, on an emotional level since the sun is in Cancer and Saturn is in Scorpio. Both of those signs, Cancer and Scorpio, are water signs. And that deals with the feelings and the emotions. And then later on in the week, on Saturday the 12th, we have a full moon in Capricorn. Uh, the moon is going to be at 20 degrees Capricorn. And, um, of course, the sun will be at 20 degrees Cancer. So, you know, if you are a Cancer or Capricorn, or even if you're a Libra or an Aries, which are the signs that uh, square Cancer and Capricorn, and, you know, you you were born around, oh, gee, what would that be? That would be born being born around uh, the middle of the month, I would say. Um, the middle of, of those months of the signs of Aries, Libra, Cancer, or Capricorn. So you'll feel this especially strongly. And you actually will probably feel it Friday as well. I feel like Friday and Saturday, even though the full moon in Eastern Daylight Time is full on Saturday, you're going to feel that building up on Friday because there's a lot of aspects the moon is going to make um, as that full moon is approaching. And it's going to be um, quite a powerful one, so just be aware of that. And then on Sunday, the 13th, Mercury, the planet of communication and our thoughts and our ideas, is going to be leaving the sign of Gemini where it has been retrograde um, for a few weeks there in June, and it's going to be moving back into Cancer. Now, it was three or four degrees Cancer when it went to retrograde in June, so now as it's just going back into Cancer, it'll be another you know, three, four, or five days here until it, it passes what we call the shadow point, the shadow point being where it actually went retrograde. So pretty soon we're going to be free and clear. That'll be probably around the 15th, 16th maybe of uh, next week is when Mercury will be past that point that it went retrograde and our, our thoughts, our ideas, our um, you know, our, our brainstorming, uh, you know, ideas that we have in our head will start to become more clear. Communication will start to become more clear. 
Then also on that same day, the 13th, we have Venus is going to be in a nice harmonious aspect with Mars. Of course, Mars is in the sign of Libra still. It actually is going to be moving out of Libra later in the month of July. That's part of some of the uh, redirection energies that are happening this month. But that Venus trining um, Mars is going to be a really nice uh, aspect of time, a good time of flowing, beneficial energies and communication and, and being with, with people that we care about. This is, can be romantic relationships, family relationships, but it's, it's just a really nice kind of harmonious energy. I also just want to briefly mention that the planet Saturn and the planet Uranus are slowing down this month. So again, that's something that you're going to want to take a look at as far as the monthly angel card video or the angelic astrology article. And it comes to my mind uh, as I'm speaking about Saturn and Uranus slowing down to a stationary point. You know, that means they're, they're not really moving very much this month of July. And, and that's a whole different, um, a whole big thing in and of itself that I actually want to make a Soul Reflections video about. And so very soon here, you're going to want to look for a Soul Reflections video to kind of explain what some of the energies are that are going on right now and some of the um, experiences that we're having because of those energies. Okay, so let's get into seeing what the angels have to say for us this week. Your stones of choice are, this is volcanic glass. Now this actually comes from a volcano erupting. Um, it's black, it's glassy-like, it's shiny, and, and again, that's from um, the volcanic you know, uh, lava that kind of cools and, and hardens. And it's actually a really kind of neat stone. Your second stone of choice is infinite, a beautiful green light green kind of stone. It has really kind of a smooth energy to it. I really, really like this, this stone. It's very peaceful and calming. And then your third stone of choice is charoit. And this charoit is uh, a purple stone. It's got some white as well as some black kind of inclusion swirl energies in it. So again, your stones of choice are the volcanic glass, the infinite, or the charoit. So let's take a look and see. We'll choose three cards for the week, and we ask that all of our angels, guides, master guides, and teachers of the light come in. We ask the archangels to come in, the ascended masters, to provide us with whatever messages, wisdom, knowledge we need to know for this week. And by the way, our special message card this week is going to be coming from the Ascended Masters deck by Doreen Virtue. And here we're using the Angel Tarot deck by Doreen Virtue. Okay, so looking for whatever messages we need to know for this week. First card, second card. And we're looking then for the third card for this weekly reading, which is going to be this one here. Okay, so the first card for this week is the Ace of Water. The Aces are always about new beginnings. So the message at the bottom of this says, falling in love or the resurgence of a relationship, spiritual growth and enhanced intuition, and it also talks about a new home. So this can def definitely have several meanings to it. We're talking about the emotional realm, the feeling realm. And that's interesting since we do have Mercury going into Cancer, which is a water sign that deals with the feelings and emotions this week. Um, but here we can be talking about, you know, uh, relationship matters. We can be talking about our home, our family. And we can be talking about psychic and intuitive and healing abilities that we have. But whatever it is, and we're going to look at the second card to get more information, this is definitely about a new start, a new beginning, you know, it's kind of like it's, to me, the aces are kind of about the birth of the energy. So this is the, the, the very beginning stages or the birth of this new energy, whatever it happens to be. But let's go ahead and take a look at the second card to get more information about what that's about. Okay, you know, I had a feeling this was going to be an earth card for some reason, but this is the queen of earth. And it says, thoughtful, creative, warm, and sensible. And at the bottom it says, make time for those around you. Take a sensible approach. 
deal with challenges in a kind and understanding manner. Now, I really feel here that this is describing qualities within us because the queen, of course, is a very mothering, nurturing energy. And when she's in the, the sign of earth, you know, this is a pentacles or an earth card, it's very grounded. It's grounded, it's practical, it's calm, it's balanced, it's creative. And I really feel like the birth of those new energies that we're talking about, the ace of water, the birth of these new feelings, these new emotions, I, I feel like what they're saying to me is it's the birth of the divine feminine, okay? And we've been talking about and we've been opening up to the divine feminine for quite some time, but this is kind of, um, you know, a move forward. You know, we have Mars that went direct recently. We have Mercury that went direct and is now moving into Cancer. So I just feel like the energies are becoming more balanced, more secure, more grounded within us. And that's going to enhance and increase our intuitions, our psychic messages, our abilities for healing, and our abilities to tap into our feelings and emotions. And I do feel like the, this has something to do also with relationships with, with people, family members, those that you love, um, and, uh, you know, kind of tapping in again to that more uh, caring, mothering, and nurturing part of ourselves. Let's take a look at what the last card says. This is interesting because we have another court card, and this is the King of Air. And the King of Air here says brilliant, impartial, professional, and diplomatic. It says speak your mind with confidence. Seek out professional advice. Balance mental and emotional considerations. So here again, we have an energy now that deals with the mental realm um, and speaking your truth. But when you speak your truth here, it's not in a harsh way. It's not in a, a way that's challenging to people because that ace of water that we started out with and that queen of earth that's very grounded and practical here we're speaking our truth with love and compassion although we are, we're still speaking our truth we you know we have to communicate and speak our truth and they're telling me that this is about relationship matters so you know it's a very positive energy though about relationship matters it means that challenges from the past or you know, upsets that we may have had in relationships over the past, you know, two or three weeks, that if we communicate and we speak our truth, but we speak it with love and compassion and respect for one another, that things are going to, we're going to have this new beginning, you know, we're going to have this new beginning in the way we feel, the way we express, the way we show emotions uh, to one another. And I just really feel that this is kind of a calm and peaceful week. I don't feel that it's really action-oriented because we have no fire cards here, but it's, it's definitely a week where things start to balance out and start to feel secure, and we start to feel a little bit you know, more balanced and, and better about what's going on. Okay, the angels actually are telling me that I should pull like a fourth card here from this deck. So we're going to actually ask for whatever that fourth card is. Kind of show themselves what card this one's sticking out and says this one okay so let's let's look at this this is the two of earth so we have another earth card here and it says too much going on at once the need to make a decision consider a more playful approach so again I feel like you know from the energies of the past that have been going on it's been a really busy time um, we've been juggling responsibilities, we've been, you know, juggling projects, career, family, and everything in our lives. And this is saying to kind of lighten the mood, you know, lighten the mood up, look at things again from a, a, a more playful, from a more playful perspective, like the card says, to bring more joy in, to bring more happiness in, to not be so serious all the time. Um, and again, with the communication, uh, that we have with our family, with our friends, with our partners, with our loved ones, that we're going to have this wonderful new beginning um, of a new way of feeling and a good and positive way of feeling. Okay, so let's see what your extra special message is depending on your stone of choice. So we're going to give these a shuffle here. And if you chose the uh, volcanic glass, 
Interesting. I'm going to choose this one for the volcanic glass. I'm going to pull them kind of first. We're going to choose this one for the infinite, and this one is going to be for the charoid. So let's see what your special message is. If you chose the volcanic glass, this says, this is Mother Mary, and Mother Mary says to nurture yourself this week. And this kind of is in alignment with the the feeling, the energies of the cards for this week, you know, very grounded, very secure, feeling oriented. Um, and, you know, to be able to nurture others and show our feelings and emotions in a respectful manner to others, we have to feel that way about ourselves. We have to nurture ourselves, respect ourselves, take care of ourselves. And so for those of you that chose the volcanic glass, this is this is what your message is. Mother Mary is saying, to please treat yourself with that kind of respect and nurturing and love and compassion um, that you would for anybody else. Treat yourself like that first um, because you are a part of God's source energies. We're, you know, we reflect energies uh, to one another, from one another. And so you know, how you treat yourself is going to kind of mirror how other people end up treating you too. So that's part of the message with kind of caring for and nurturing yourself this week. Okay. If you chose the infinite, your message is the power of joy with Maitreya. And, you know, I really like this card. This is kind of a Buddha here and he's holding a rainbow and he's surrounded by this wonderful golden yellow light and that deals with the solar, solar plexus chakra of joy, happiness, contentment, even confidence. But the power of joy makes positive things happen. It's, it's really, you know, an, an interesting thing the way energy works. When we surround ourselves with positive people, positive circumstances, when we ourselves think positive thoughts or feel positive emotions, that, that power of joy and that, that power of the positivity that we're uh, surrounding ourselves with creates miracles in our lives and it allows things to fall into place much easier. And here, since it seems like we're talking about relationship matters this week uh, of all types, you know, that power of joy is going to be very healing, um, not just the communication, but just showing love and joy and happiness for having one another in your lives is in and of itself uh, the magic that's going to bring healing and balance uh, back into the situation. And then if you chose the Charoit this week, this is Serapis Bay, and the, the message says, go now. Now, this this can have a dual meaning. Sometimes it means to, when it, when it says go now, sometimes it means that it, it's time to release uh, certain mindsets, patterns, subconscious patterns, uh, anxiety, or you know, um, lower vibrational thought processes. That it's time to go now, kind of away from, you know, to kind of leave and go away from some of those old subconscious patterns that are holding you back. And conversely, go now here, this message can also mean to go now towards your passion, to go towards your joy, to go towards what brings you happiness and fulfillment in life, and that it's time to move forward and um, kind of connect with. And here I, I, I am drawn to his heart chakra kind of glowing with this beautiful bright light. It, it's time to open your heart. It's time to open your heart chakra to you know, what brings you contentment, joy, happiness, security in life, and to go towards that now, that now is the time. If you've been thinking about making some sort of change or move, whether it be in career or in family or in a relationship or even, you know, moving locations, this message is saying, go now, it's time. It's time to move forward. So I hope you like this weekly angel card reading. Again, kind of watch for that Soul Reflections video coming up. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for all of your support, your kind words. Thank you for uh, messaging me or, or liking me on Facebook. If you want to um, see my daily posts on Facebook, please go on there and uh, give me a, a friend request and a little message letting me know that you heard this uh, on YouTube. And until next time, I send you much love and light and many, many angel blessings.